Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Python video. Uh, we're looking at a whole new module this time around. We're looking at a new series for XML RPC lib. <laughs> and you're probably looking at me like, what is that? Let's check it out. I'm on Google right now. You can just kind of type in Python XML RPC lib. And uh, our first result here is some nice Python documentation, and we're just going to hop right into it. So the first thing that you will see is this note, this notification. The XML RPC module has been renamed to XMLRPC.client in Python 3. The 2 to 3 tool will automatically adapt imports when converting your sources to Python 3. I mean, whatever. I'm using Python 2.7 something or other, not Python 3. If you're using Python 3, that's your business. Go do what you want to do. You do you, man. I'll do me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm using Python 2.7, so I'm not going to worry about XMLRPC.client and, and all that jazz and the 2 to 3 tool. But I'm just going to look at what we've got here working XMLRPC lib. Okay. Going through the documentation, the first thing that it kind of presents to you is that XMLRPC is a remote procedure call method that uses XML passed via HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, as a transport. With it, a client can call methods like functions in, in, in code and in programming, methods with parameters on a remote server. And the server is named by a URI, or Uniform Research, I think, identifier? Anyway, that's like a URL address or something you type in your address bar on your browser. It's a web page. It's not a web page, but it's the internet, you know, HTTP, the internet, blah, blah, blah. And it gets, you are returned structured data. So, this module supports writing XML RPC client code, and it handles all the details of translating between conformal Python objects and XML on the wire. Um, there's a warning that it's not secure against maliciously constructed data. If you need to parse untrusted or authenticated data, check out XML vulnerabilities and stuff like that. Um, it, there's a note here that it's changed in version 2.79 for HTTPS URIs for secure hypertext transfer protocol. Um, the library now performs all the necessary certificate and hostname checks by default. That's cool, I think. Um, <laughs> if we just kind of move on here, looking through the documentation, the first thing that it tells us is about this nifty class called Server Proxy. And this is kind of the bare bones of the library, from what I understand. So, just going through the reading here, a Server Proxy instance is an object that manages communication with a remote XML TAC RPC server. The required first argument is a URI, okay, Uniform Research Indicator, not Identifier, I was, I was, I was close, and it'll normally be the URL of the server. The optional second argument is a Transport Factory instance, blah, blah, blah. more information, um, some of the stuff I'm not going to go through because in this tutorial, in this series, I'm going to get through this on a little bit of a higher level. I'm going to show you what the library does what you can do with it, but I'm not going to show you what more you can do with it. <laughs> so uh, I'll show you some stuff, but not totally not everything that you can manipulate with this library. If you want to learn more about it, dude, do your own reading, do your own research. That's awesome. I encourage that. Um, uh, here. The returned instance is a proxy object with methods, like functions, that can be used to invoke corresponding RPC calls on the remote server. If the remote server supports the introspection API, the proxy can also be used to query the remote server for methods it supports, also known as service discovery, and fetch other server-associated metadata. That's kind of cool. So that means, like, you can figure out what the server can give you, like, what methods can you use, what functions can you call, and sort of thing. So this instance, the server proxy, takes... Python basic types and argument and uh, an argument, sorry, and it will return Python basic types and classes. Things that are conformal include the following. So these are just data types that you can use between Python and the XML RPC. Um, it looks like it uses pretty much the normal stuff that we use in Python, and also dates and binary data. So in case you want to use any of those, you can. <laughs> I'm probably not going to cover them, but. It says here these are the full set of data types supported by the convention, XML RPC. Um, talks about raising faults and errors and stuff like that. Um, here's another line. Server... <laughs> wow, I, I talk. Trust me. I know English. I'm intelligent. I promise. 
Server is retained as an alias for server proxy for backwards compatibility. New code should use server proxy. And server proxy up top here is the thing that we were just reading. This is the class that we're using to create stuff. So you can use server. You can remove this word proxy. But they say, at least they encourage using server proxy. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. And I also want to move on to this XML RPC how-to. Um, yeah, let's let's go through that before we go into anything else. So, I'm going to click on this, and it takes me right to uh, tldp.org. It's like the Linux documentation product, uh, project. Super awesome thing. So this page describes how to use XML RPC to implement clients and servers in a variety of languages. Provides example code in Perl, Python. Hey, Python! That's what we're going to be looking at in other languages. So, okay, that's cool. So in this table of contents, uh, my eyes went right to what is XML RPC. Let's check that out. Now it says that XML RPC... Oh, there's a website for it. That's cool. We can look through that, too. XML RPC is a simple, portable way to make remote procedure calls over HTTP. It can be used with Perl, Java, Python, C, C++, PHP, and many other programming languages. Okay. Implementations are available for Unix, Windows, and the Macintosh. <laughs> the Macintosh. <laughs> Alright. Um, looks like it shows some Perl code. It also shows some Python code. And it's using our library, XML RPC lib. Cool. That's the one we're just going to check out. Looking at the code here, it imports the library, creating a new variable or object returned by the server class. Oh, and just like our documentation said, server works, but most people should now use server proxy. It takes the URL, or the URI, of where the RPC lives on the internet, and then it looks like it's calling a function from the server and getting returned some data. So that, that's all it is, really. It's just running a function, calling a function. You're calling the server. It's like a it's cool. It, it kind of it kind of seems like a programmer server, like it's just storing a bunch of functions that you might want to use later on in your life. That's kind of nifty, I guess. Um, in this, in the following few chapters, you'll learn how to write these clients and servers in a variety of programming languages. Super cool. Um, how it works? Fully described in Dave Weiner's official specification. Oh, hey, okay, this is the same website that we were just at. Um, and it's, okay, it's XML all behind the scenes, that makes sense. XML RPC is a remote procedure calling protocol that works over the internet, we covered that. An XML RPC message is an HTTP post request, like you simply see on websites, and that sort of thing. The body of the request is an XML, a procedure executes on the server, and the value returned is also formatted in XML. That's kind of cool. So, examples here. Oh. Oh, thanks, Symantec. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Back to what I was talking about, <laughs> or what I was trying to talk about, you know me. This is the behind-the-scenes stuff of how the library and XML RPC really works. I'm not going to show you all this, but I want you to know that it exists. So if you want to read up on it, you totally can. The supported data types are everything we were just kind of looking at in the documentation of our library. There's the history, XML, other protocols. I'm not really worried about that. Common XML RPC interfaces. So these servers provide built-in methods. They aren't part of XML RPC itself, but they make for handy add-ons. Introspection. Hey, that's the same thing we were reading about, like service discovery in the uh, Python documentation. Discovering server APIs. Ed Dumbbell proposed the following set of methods. List methods. Method help. Method signature. Hmm. Okay, and they always return either an array or a string or an array, I, I would think. If a server supports these methods, you can print it out or print out some documentation. Uh, so, here's the same Python code. Import XML RPC lib. Server. Creating the server. Same thing we were looking at beforehand. And for each of these methods that you've got in list methods, like it'll return them to you, it'll print what the method is and a help command for what it actually does, what the function will do. 
So these methods are supported by servers written in PHP, C, and Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. Introspection support for Perl, Python, and Java is available at XML RPC Hacks page. I'll check that one out. Okay. <laughs> Looks like this page doesn't exist. That's fine. <laughs> we'll just go on our merry way. Um, and we'll just keep checking this out. To demonstrate XML RPC, here's the following API in as many languages as possible. Some indifference. Okay. This is just a function they're going to show off to us. So, let's check it out. XML RPC with Perl. We're going to look at Python and... I know I saw it in the table of contents. Okay, sweet. Next page. Using XML RPC with Python. Next. Installing it. Here it is. A Python client. XML RPC lib. Server URL. That's just a string that saves the server connection page. They just... Okay, they just reach for the function. They call it. And their return data... And they can just use it in the code. That's super cool. Alright. Is there anything more for us? Okay, no, it's, then it just goes on to show other languages. Java, PHP. Alright. I'm going to go back to our documentation. XML RPC lib. Because I know there was another section we were thinking about looking at. Do server proxy objects. Instance has a method corresponding to each remote procedure call accepted by the XML RPC server. I know you guys can read all this on your own, and I mean, I would recommend doing that. This video is kind of for like a quick crash course through it. Servers that support the XML introspection API support some common method groups under the reserved system attributes. List methods. Methods in oh, hey, these are the same things we were looking at in the, uh, yeah, method help. These are the same things we were looking at in the uh, Linux documentation. So, this method returns a list of, of strings, each one for the method or the function supported by the server. That's pretty cool, so you can just learn more about what it is that you're connected to and what you're looking at. Same thing with method help and method signature. Sweet. All right. So... I think I'm good with what I wanted to present to you in this video. This video and this tutorial, th this one was just all about research, learning what this library can do and what it will do. In the next video, we'll actually take a look at the code, and we'll just execute everything we just saw, and at least we're, we're kind of looking at and researching, and that way we can get a, a better feel for it, and we can actually do it on our own. So, that's it. Um, <laughs> I think I'm good. Uh, I hope you guys are okay with this kind of learning style. Uh, I know it's a little bit different from my normal series, but this is the way that I wanted to at least present XML RPC lib. So, on to the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.